in this video, I'm going to walk you through how I finished out my desk project, so stay tuned for some tips that you can use for your own DIY projects. Thanks for tuning in, devoted viewer. I don't want to leave you in suspense any longer. I want to show you how I finished out my desk project. First and foremost, if you like the content on this channel, I would ask that you subscribe, like, and comment. You have no idea how much those three things, the impact that they make on any sort of content creator's channel. So if you do like what's going on here, I'd ask that you do those three, subscribe, like, and comment. But also, I just want to let you know, my basement's not any cleaner than it was in the previous video. So it's going to be a little bit messy and I ask that you bear with me. I am just a normal human and I have a messy garage and basement. So all that to say, just bear with me and I hope that I can pass along some tips and tricks that will benefit you the next time you do a DIY project. So what you are about to see is my attempt at improvising since I don't have a working circular saw to try to true up the ends of these boards. When I cut these boards, they were not 100% even on some of the ends. So I did want to go back and make sure that they had a nice flush finish. So as you can see from this, I'm using a, a triangle to be able to draw a straight line with my chalk line. And then I'm using a rotary tool, the, the Dremel, as well as an oscillating uh, cutter to cut through these boards. This is where I was having the issues with the smoke alarm, because as it turns out, the Dremel with that cutting wheel creates a fair amount of smoke, which uh, my fire alarms did not like. And this would have been a lot easier if I had had a circular saw or had the boards cut to the right lengths to begin with. That's where a lot of uh, planning beforehand before you cut comes into play. Just remember the adage, measure twice, cut once, to make sure that you're making the best cuts that you can. But I was able to make my process work with these tools, and I was fairly happy with the end result. So by using these tools, I was able to get the surface cut better so that all I have to do is sand the surface down and it will be good to go. Next, I'm actually attaching, <laughs> attaching, that's a new word, put that in your dictionary. I'm attaching some fasteners to be able to attach the tabletop to the base. I don't like drilling holes straight through the top. I would rather have some sort of metal bracket to be able to, to make that connection. And what you're seeing here is my attempt to sand down the surface. Remember from the last video that I had already put wood filler in my screw holes and on my uh, holes in the boards themselves. So I'm just going back over them and I'm sanding them all down to make sure that uh, it's a nice smooth finish for that, that paint to adhere to. I am wearing a respirator, you know, dust is not, not a good thing and it, it can cause health issues. So I would always encourage that you do that. For this project, since I knew I would be painting it, I actually just used a 120 grit for the base and I also used a uh, 210 grit for the top to make sure that all my finishes were smooth. I'll put a link below to the sander that I'm using. It's just a small black and decker palm sander and just being consistent, it, you know, you can make pretty quick work of this. Sanding though is one of my least favorite things and if it's one of your least favorite things too There's a few things you can do to minimize the sanding that you you have to do The very first one is if you're painting over staining that's going to make your life a lot easier because uh, Paint is very good at hiding some of the imperfections So you don't have to be as diligent with a wood filler if you are painting uh, So definitely if you don't like sanding painting is probably the way to go Another thing that you can do to kind of save time when you're sanding is is just make sure that you've cut your boards evenly that you don't have any woods uh, standing up on it you're essentially you're, you're you don't want your boards to be furry is, is probably the best way I can describe it but as long as you have smooth boards and, and you're using your wood filler and you know what you're going to be finishing your uh, item with all of those things if used correctly can help minimize the time that you have to spend sanding so since I had already planed the boards, I just went over them with a light 210 uh, grit sandpaper. Just went around the corners to make sure that they were evened up and looked nice and just sanded the top a little bit to make sure that it would have a good finish as well. So devoted viewer, I'm not going to make you watch uh, me paint this table. I ended up putting three coats of paint on the table and that first coat is always the one that takes the longest just because you have to get a good base coat on that wood. I was using a paint and primer in one, 
so that meant that I just had to use one type of paint but I did put three coats on it and just remember that when you're painting that that first coat takes time but those second and third coats that you're putting on always go on faster and usually require a little bit less paint it's just that first coat has to really get into the wood and you want to make sure that you're you've got a good base to be able to build off of so this is the polycrylic that I'll be applying over the top of the table as well as over my painted surfaces. You can see that this is the, the table after it's had a couple coats of paint. The main item or the main point that I want to point out about this polycrylic from Minwax is that it looks very milky white when you're first going to apply it. It is a water-based finish and when you actually put it on your wood you can see that color coming out and there will be times when it does appear to be a little milky white but that's not always going to be the case once it dries it will dry clear this is a pro tip right here so get ready whenever i'm going to take a break or maybe wait overnight to apply another coat i wrap my paintbrush in some plastic and i will actually put it in the refrigerator putting your paintbrush in the refrigerator that keeps that paint from curing and hardening overnight so you don't have to worry so much about having to clean out your paint brushes only to then get them dirty again so I always buy cheap brushes wrap them in plastic put them in the refrigerator and I throw them away when I'm finished with the project so this is a side-by-side -side view of the tabletops one finished with polycrylic already and one not you can see both of them finished with the polycrylic now. I put four coats of polycrylic on the top of the table. I put three coats of paint on the base and then I put a layer of polycrylic over that base as well. The biggest tip that I can give you is when you're applying paint or polycrylic is go with the grain of the wood. Uh, make nice smooth strokes and especially when you're applying polycrylic or any sort of sealer you want to minimize the amount of bubbles that are on the wood those bubbles when they dry are what create that hard surface that you have to sand down to get smooth so just minimize the bubbles as you go so as you can see now on the screen this is the finished desk in place I've got my little Marvel history book over to the side because I'm a nerd and you never know when someone's going to ask you a question and you need to flip into it to find the answer. Uh, but all that to say, I hope you've enjoyed watching this project. I'm very happy with how the desk has turned out. I'm actually filming this video from it right now and it's a great workspace and a great space for me to be able to work on my YouTube videos. So if you do have any questions, by all means, leave a comment and ask me those questions and I'll try to, well, I will try, I will get back to you. You. that's a commitment and a promise so it's going to happen next week we're going to be looking at some reclaimed wood projects and some tips for those we're also going to be uh, covering a video that I can only call at this point why you cannot finish a beginner DIY project for under $100 so stay tuned for that hopefully that will answer some questions that uh, you might have so all that to say thanks for tuning in and I look forward to talking with you next week